there's a book and a number of videos out there by someone named Colin Flaherty. Flaherty? Flaherty? I don't know how to pronounce his last name the right way, but it's called Don't Make the Black Kids Angry. And it's trying to compile every time uh, black people uh, become violent over something, right? And it's shoving forth some big conspiracy against, you know, white people. Then there's this song by Tom Robinson called Glad to be Gay that goes into detail about a lot of things that the gay community has had to deal with. And even back in the 70s, people would say, well, you know, you're, it's legal to be gay now, so shut up about your rights. Shut up about the way that society treats you. Shut up. You've got your rights, so shut up. When I watched that video, it, it just popped into my head. I said, I need to see, I need to hear this song again. And I started crying. I started crying because it's like, you know, this is the stuff that we used to have to deal with. This is some of the stuff that we've somewhat overcome. But if you look at the comment section of those videos of Tom Robinson performing that song, you'll see some of the same shit that we dealt with back then. And what pisses me off, I mean, it really, really pisses me off, is when people will say, well, you need to stop it with this identity politics because white people are being persecuted and they don't realize the irony and the hypocrisy in their statements like that. Poor, poor white people. People are saying negative things about white people but screw everyone else for talking about identity politics. Shit is fucking ridiculous. The reason why I mentioned the book at the beginning by Colin Flaherty, 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 however you pronounce it, or is it colon? Is it Colin? Is it colon? You know, whatever. Is because what the real thing is, is don't make white people angry. That's the real key issue here. Because if you make white people angry, you get people like Trump in office. That's what happens. Make fun of, of feminine men all you want. Make fun of women all you want. But don't you dare make fun of straight, white, cisgender males, especially if they're masculine. People will say things like, well, look, uh, you know, gay people are in media now. Therefore, you have equality. It's just like people saying, well, you know, racism doesn't exist in this country anymore because look, Barack Obama. Hey, look, Barack Obama. That means it's all, all the, the problems that the black community have had in the past, they're all over because look, we have a black president. Interesting, yeah, that's interesting. If you look at documents and newspapers and hear people's accounts of, let's say, prior to 1920, you'll hear the same exact things being said about black people as what is said now. Well, they're not slaves anymore, so, you know, what's their problem? What are they complaining about? Negative attitudes? Well, that doesn't matter. Look, they, they have rights now, so they need to shut up. And yet, Someone making a negative statement about straight, white, cisgender males is met with, look at this reverse racism, it's terrible. Well, I'm not going to say that any sort of racism is a good thing. But for you to react so extremely to this shit, while telling those who have dealt with this shit for a long time that they need to shut up, to say that that makes people like myself and other minorities angry is an understatement. A severe understatement. And when people like myself start to see some of the same social patterns from 20, 30, 40 years ago, it's worrisome. 
but we're not supposed to worry about it because, you know, words are, they're, they're just words. Words don't hurt people unless, of course, they say something negative about straight, white, cisgender people. And then words are, are terrible. You know, words are only harmless when they're against uh, other demographics than mine. That's the message that people seem to be pushing forth. And you wonder why some of us are angry. See, the real thing isn't about, well, don't make the, uh, the minorities angry. It's, no, don't make the majorities angry. Don't piss off the people that are in the majority. Or they'll fuck you over. And just how many people are willing to do somersaults and stand on their head to do Trump apologetics? And apologetics for people who seem to be interested in taking us back to the 50s, it's a very disturbing thing to look at. And then some of you will be like, well, it's really disturbing to, that, that, that so many SJWs say negative things about straight white cisgender people. Because, you know, everyone except for straight white cisgender males need to grow a thicker skin. And nobody should be allowed to have a safe space except for straight white cisgender males. Because they really need it. Is it really affecting you that deeply? Now, I understand that you're, some of you are just so angry because of things like affirmative action. And I don't think affirmative action is the right way to go about things. Um, it does create resentment. It does create an environment where some people might start getting treated like shit because they're looked at as, well, you were only hired because you're black. But there has to be something done about the kinds of biases and prejudices that people have towards women and towards minorities. Please take note, I haven't said that women are minorities. Just take note of that, okay? I don't say that women are minorities. I use separate categories. What, what I think is funny with, with you know, with people's complaints about women is, you know, well, when women are given a chance, they're, they're showing to do better than men. If men's rights groups actually focused just on men, they'd probably be a lot more respected. But so many of the complaints are about women. If we want things to improve, we have to be willing to do some work. The LGBT community probably should uh, reach out to the straight community more than it has. The straight community should probably reach out to the LGBT community a little more than it has. People should probably try to stand up for other people more than they have. But in this new post-truth reality that we seem to live in now, none of that seems possible anymore. And no matter what black people go through, no matter what women go through, no matter what gay people go through, no matter what trans people go through, uh, none of their stuff matters. What matters is what white people go through. And primarily, the only things that the straight, white, male, cisgender demographic goes through because they are that demographic are people complaining about the way that stereotypically the straight, white, cisgender male demographic does things and acts and the values. So you're outraged that other people are outraged at your demographic. And I find that strange. Because after all, don't piss off the white people. The apathy that is spreading throughout the straight, white, cisgender male demographic makes it very difficult to have empathy towards the straight, white, cisgender male demographic. The worse the attitudes get, the more that you say that words don't hurt anything, the more you tell the LGBT community 
and women and black people to stop complaining, the more that we don't care about what you go through as a straight, white, cisgender male. So go ahead and keep demonizing people for going into identity politics. Go ahead, keep demonizing people for that. While complaining that, uh, oh, we're, we're treated so terrible as straight, white, cisgender males. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, it makes you look ridiculous. See, here's the thing. Okay, I used to speak against the notion of identity politics, but I started to realize there's really no way completely out of identity politics. There's a certain amount of uh, identity issues that come with almost all politics. It seems the problem is when people talk about things that they go through that other demographics don't have to go through. Some of you are essentially saying, well, no, we should only talk about things that all demographics deal with. That's how you're an egalitarian. Don't tackle anything that any group or demographic go through that other groups don't. Don't tackle any of that. You know, let's just tackle things that everyone goes through and it'll just trickle down and will eventually help those other people. It hasn't worked throughout our history. Just like trickle-down economics doesn't work. And there are people who say, well, we just need to help people that are really in need. And then the question is, how do we define that? How do we define who are the real people that are really in need? How do we define that? You're obviously against breaking people apart into groups. Well, you're arguing that it should be about the majority. Now, granted, we should probably be focusing more on poor versus rich. Uh, what kind of shitty area is someone living in? And base more things on that type of data rather than uh, race or gender or any of that. But I don't think we should get rid of the other types of uh, ways of breaking apart demographics. I don't think we should get rid of those things. But we should be focusing more on uh, income level and, you know, what kind of area someone is living in. But essentially, a lot of people are basically arguing that we should care about those who are in the majority first before we care about those that are in the minority. And I think that's a little bit weird. And the fact that you can't seem to see it as a form of cultural supremacy it's a little weird to me. Do you not really understand the meanings of words? And you just want to get emotional because people have said certain words, but then call everyone who has a different opinion than you uh, just being whiny and emotional and all of that? So again, I, I think this notion of people saying, oh, words don't hurt people. And then you turn around and get all offended because someone said something negative about straight, white, cisgender males. You're a fucking hypocrite. You're pathetic. And maybe you should think about your hypocrisy a little bit. It'd be nice.